Now I know you probably want to dive straight into Excel, but we need to cover some theory first. Don't worry, it won't hurt too much. So what is a dashboard? Well, to quote Stephen Few, a dashboard is a visual display of the most important information needed to achieve one or more objectives, consolidated and arranged on a single screen so the information can be monitored at a glance. And here I've got a screenshot of the dashboard I'm going to teach you in this mini course. Okay, here's the dirty secret. Actually, it's not really that dirty. A lot of people think that there's some kind of black magic or another program or add-in required to build dashboards in Excel, but that's not the case. You can build Excel dashboards simply using the built-in tools. And that means you may already have the Excel skills required to build an interactive dashboard in Excel. I'll cover what these skills are shortly. You see, Excel dashboards are simply a compilation of charts and tables in a one-page report. There's no add-ins required or special software. All you need is Excel, a bunch of data, and of course the skills. You can build dynamic interactive dashboards without any VBA. Sure, you can use VBA if you want to, but most of my dashboards don't use VBA at all. So at the end of this, you'll know how to create your own interactive Excel dashboards. But first, we have a little bit more theory. So just as you wouldn't build a house without a plan, the same applies to building your dashboards. We need to know the purpose of the dashboard. Find out the underlying reason for the dashboard request. Is there some hunch about business performance that management might want to prove or disprove? We need to know the audience so we can pitch it at the right level. There's no point presenting a complex chart if the audience won't know how to read it. What are the KPIs we should be measuring? What time period should the report cover? Where's the data coming from and how often can we get an update? How often should the report be updated and how will it be delivered? And lastly, do a mock-up of your dashboard on paper before you dive into Excel. Time spent here will save you hours of redesign later. So the Excel skills that you need. Well, it probably goes without saying, but charting skills are a must have. Excel tables aren't mandatory, but if you want to be able to quickly build dashboards that are robust, and dynamic and easy to update, then tables will be a huge asset. Are we using tables in the dashboard I built in this course? Formulas. Well, I don't think there's ever a time where formulas won't be needed. Obviously, the more formula skills you have, the better, but dashboards can be built with some fairly standard formulas. Functions like if, vlookup, index, match, to name a few. Pivot tables. Now these aren't mandatory either, so if you're more comfortable with formulas, then that's okay too. On the other hand, if you're more familiar with pivot tables, then you're ready to build dashboards right now. In fact, the dashboard I'm going to show you today relies almost exclusively on pivot tables for the analysis, and that's because they're super quick to put together. Formatting, well here you mostly need restraint as opposed to knowing all the formatting tricks available in Excel. And lastly, you don't need any VBA skills to build dashboards. In my online dashboard course, I show you a few cool tricks using VBA, but I give you the code so it's easy for anyone to use, even if you don't have any VBA knowledge. But by no means is VBA a prerequisite to building dashboards. And I won't be using any VBA to build the dashboard in this course. So let's look at design. Well, design can make the difference between conveying your message quickly and easily and hiding it in a sea of formatting and chart junk like these donut charts and gauges. This dashboard looks pretty, but it's cluttered with overuse of formatting and bad chart choices. Dashboards like this might give the reader an initial wow because it looks so pretty, but once they realize it's taking them a long time to glean any information, they'll soon get bored with it. When it comes to dashboard design, less is more. That is less colors, less fonts, and less formatting. Stay well away from 3D effects, gradient fills, shadows, and any other unnecessary formatting. You see, what we don't want to do is hide the valuable information with too much formatting noise. Instead, we want to use color and formatting to draw attention to key points and show relationships between the data. 
For example, if you have two charts displaying the same metric but in a different context, then you might color them the same to show the reader that they are related, just like I've done in this dashboard with the bar charts at the bottom here. Both use the same color because they both display visitor numbers, just grouped differently. Charts are a useful tool in communicating messages through a picture, that is the shape of the data contains a pattern, trend or exception, but knowing which chart to use for your data and the message is essential. Bar charts are ideal for comparing values across categories since the long category names are easier to read when the axis is vertical. The bars allow you to easily compare values. Line charts are ideal for displaying the pattern of measures over time. Histograms show the distribution of data grouped into bins or intervals. And detecting relationships between two separate values can be done with a scatter chart, like I've done here with ice cream sales versus temperature. As the temperature goes up, so too do the ice cream sales. Okay, so there were a few pointers on which chart to choose for your data type. I could go on for hours on that topic alone, but don't worry, I won't. Instead, I've written extensively about the different data and chart types in my chart recipe ebook. I'll direct you to where you can download the ebook at the end of this mini course.